Hello and welcome, and today with Poetry with Jacob, we will be discussing the poet William Blake. So, we have our first poem, which I will read aloud to you guys, um, A Poison Tree. I was angry with my friend, I told my wrath, my wrath did end. I was angry with my foe, I told it not, my wrath did grow. I watered it in fears, night and morning with my tears, and I sunned it with smiles, and with soft, deceitful wiles. And it grew both day and night, till it bore an apple bright, and my foe behold it shine, he knew that it was mine. And into my garden stole, when the night had veiled the pole. In the morning glad I see my foe outstretched beneath the tree. So, first let's dissect and explain the poem. It has one, two, three, and four stanzas. It has a rhyme sequence of A, A, B, B, as you can tell with the uh, friend and end. It, um, it also has many uh, um, re repetitions of I. But uh, before we get too much into that, we're going to explain the symbolism behind this uh, so-called poison tree. Now, picture it like this. You're mad with a friend, so you tell him you're mad, and pretty much he's okay with that, and your anger, it just pretty much goes away. And that's the, what the first two lines are pretty much saying. They're saying that uh, he was angry with a friend, and I told him of the wrath, and his wrath ended. So pretty much it turns into a, a very um, a, a good story. It sounds pretty good right now. And, but then he has the second two lines, which say, I was angry with a foe, and I told it not, my wrath did grow. So pretty much that's saying that um, he told, uh, he was angry with uh, his enemy, and he did not tell his enemy, so his wrath grew. So that's explaining the story, pretty much. Now, these last three stanzas, they are explaining what happened to his wrath and pretty much it grows into a tree metaphorically and um uh, let me continue um and i watered it with fears night and morning with my tears and i sunned it with smiles and, and with soft deceitful wiles so this first part is saying pretty much he's growing a tree he's saying he's watered it with his fears and uh night and morning with his tears so that's pretty much just, you know, he's saying that his fear of his enemy is just making it even worse. He's, he keeps growing this imaginary tree that um, is slowly, slowly growing. So it's pretty much, it's right now it's a, it's a sapling. It's, let's just call it a, it's a sapling. Let's say it's right there. And um, give it a, a little leaf. And um, it's just being watered by these little by um by his tears and uh the second two lines say i sunned it with smiles and with soft deceitful wiles so this is saying that he um he tried to you know blow it blow it off he he tried to just on the outside show that you know he was he was okay with it his his enemy didn't expect anything but really this just made it grow even more it turned into a small tree and this turned into more of a tree and then so the next stanza and it grew both day by night so it, he's saying that it, it kept growing till it bore an apple bright and my beef, my foe behold it shine he knew that it was mine so now we're saying that after a while this tree has turned into a giant oak tree. It's very, very tall. It's got, you know, birds living in it. It's got all this stuff. It's fully developed. And now, there is an apple. Now, this apple is very important. Because it actually symbolizes what he, um, his hatred. All his hatred added up into one. And um, he's saying his enemy saw it, and his enemy wanted that apple, and he just 
decided to go in and steal it. So finally, with the fourth stanza, he says, And into my garden soul, when the night had veiled the pole, in the morning glad I see my foe outstretched beneath the tree. So that's very easy to tell. He's saying that his enemy came, and it took the apple, and it took a bite of it, and uh, turned out to be poison. And it killed him off. And um, so, in the end, um, he was actually happy to have killed his enemy. But what this is really showing is the um, that when you hold up anger and you're not expressing yourself to anyone, um, consequences will happen for the good or the bad. Someone will probably get hurt. And um, in this case, it was his enemy. He just it, he held up until it's. All, he held up all his fears and all his hatred until it turned into an apple, which ended up killing him. Uh, so next, let's talk about the tone. Now, the tone is very important in this. It shows us, um, it actually sounds pretty, pretty happily, you know. It says, uh, smiles, and uh, it says, bright and shine. Now, you wouldn't really associate this with a poison tree. And um, it pretty much tells you that, um, you know, he's thinking of this as a happy occasion. He thinks this was a, um, a momentous occasion. And he's trying to fool you into thinking that it's going gonna, it's gonna to end good for his foe. He's going to finally, you know, the apple is going to um, actually say that it's actually telling him. So, but um, in the end... Even though it sounds um, happy. See, like, in the morning glad I see, my foe outstretched beneath the tree. It's not dark in any way. But, um, you know, outstretched beneath the tree is actually meaning he's dead. So, um, it's, ex it's pretty much um, showing that um, he was happy to kill him. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the repetition in here. Now, he, like I said before, he uses I a lot. And he also uses and a lot. Now, these are in two different uh, stanza forms, or stanzas, uh, more like the two different sections that I had told before, where it's here and here. Now, I believe he is saying, he's using the word I to show that it's actually him. It is him who is speaking, and it is not anyone else he's talking about, it's him. And um, the ands, of course, are adding to the story. They're causing, you know, uh, repetition to keep it rhyming and to keep the flow. And it's also, I think it's adding more suspense, because when they say and, you're like, oh, it's, it's still going. So, uh, punctuation also shows up a lot, which I've underlined in red. And um, it, for what I think it does, is it ends, it adds pause. So you're reading, and I watered it in fears, pause, night and morning with my tears, pause, and I sunned it with smiles, pause, and soft, deceitful wiles. So it, it helps you to think upon the, the, last, um, the last word or line you read. You know, you, you have to think about it. So he adds these pauses so you can, you can think about what he actually means. So, um, like, you might just think, I sunned it with smiles. Like, he's happy, he's, he's glad, but when really he's, it's the outward appearance and not the inward appearance. So you gotta, like, these punctuations actually help. They show what he's doing and what he wants to do. And um, it also adds a lot of flow, but it also makes it uh, choppy in the same way. So it's pretty cool. And lastly, what is the theme? Well, I think the theme is hidden wrath becomes more dangerous behind deceit. So pretty much... What is happening is he's building up this wrath, and um, he's trying to deceive the enemy to show that, you know, everything's okay. Like, he's smiling, and he's showing this bright apple. It's not like a burning fire in hell or anything. It's an apple, and um, he's showing this because, um, uh, he's telling us this because it, um, it does happen. It happens when you just take it from someone or a bully or something like that. Okay. This poem is called A Divine Image. I will read it out loud. Cruelty has a human heart. 
and jealousy a human face. Terror, the human form divine, and secrecy, the human dress. The human dress is forged iron, the human form a fiery forge, the human face a furnace sealed, the human heart its hungry gorge. And, um, so what does this mean? Well, let's start out with, um, the rhyme sequence. Um, it seems to have an A, B, C, B pattern. So we have A being here, no rhyme, B here, C here, and B. So, where is the rhymes? Right here. Jealousy and secrecy. See? So that, that's the two Bs showing where it is. Now these, um, these actually change in the next one. It's still A, B, C, B, but the, the place of the rhyme actually changes. It changes from uh, more the second word to the uh, third, uh, fourth word, where it's fiery and hungry. See, if you notice, it's still showing the A, B, C, B, but it's in a different place, and this seems to happen a lot in the in this poem. But I and I believe that it's to show how two different images are being shown with the humans, or and how they contrast, and um, just the the overall jumbled how jumbled humans are. Next we have repetition. So there's a lot of repetition here. We have human both here and here, repeated a ton of times. It is repeated in every single line, and like the rhyming sequence we just talked about, it switches in the two stanzas. And again, I'm saying I believe this because it is showing the two different uh, pictures of the human race and how unorganized and jumbled we are, how many different traits we have, but not all of them seeming good. Another form of repetition is these four words. They're all heart, faith, divine, and dress. Now, these are used uh, as, you know, human body parts. They're shown here as the human uh, forms. And down here, they are also used, see, as in dress, and dress, and form, and form, and face, and face, and heart, and heart. So, what is this telling us? It's telling us that it's giving us two different outlooks. Two different ways of seeing the human. But yet, they're almost the same. Let me show you. So, uh, cruelty is a human heart. And let's go down to the next heart phrase, which is here. Human heart is a hungry gorge. So they're both not very nice things to say about the human heart. And it's saying this, that the cruelty is one form, and the hungry gorge is another. But they, um, and the hungry gorge is actually probably describing the, um, the longing for love. So it's... The longing for love. And this is talking about the heartbreak. And both of these are conflicting because we want love, but yet we seem to break people's hearts. One other thing is the punctuation in here. Again, like the other one, he likes to use almost a punctuation after every single line and again adding pause and this one really needs it these all are very important lines it's not like the other poison tree where we have four stanzas to understand what he's trying to say we only have two stanzas to try and understand what he's trying to say so he's pretty much saying that we need to add a pause and think about what we are doing. So, the human dress is forged of iron. 
the human form of Fiery Forge. So it's saying that um, each one of it is its own idea, but they're not, they all form the human form. So we're not going to put a, a period there, and we're not going to have it keep going, because they're its own idea, but it's still going to need the comma. Because it's its, its own idea, but it has to form together to become the human image. And this also happens in the exact same punctuation here. All commas and then a period. Ending the idea. Also ending the idea. So, lastly, what is the theme? The theme is... What is human is not always humane. And they show two different sides of him. But they also coincide. They are both talking about the faults of man. They are talking about what we can do to improve or what is wrong with us. Why do we hold in our fears? Why do we, um, why do we deceive people? Why do we dress in secrecy? Why are we, why are we like this? But it's, it pretty much shows his thought pattern on this. He's saying he's, he's upset with the human race. He's trying to get us to see that we're not all perfect.